All right, troops, Yoker Uni presents. Right, this is a good point to go here. Big Isaac Newton's Three Laws of Motion. The big man pure wrote a dino book called Philosophy Naturalis Principia Mathematica, which is in some botan language called Latin. All the pure brainy muppets back in the day pure wrote everything down in Latin. Trying to understand Latin is a bit like cause Glasgow partners gone to Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> And pure trying to get he drew what the Jakeys are saying. Pure trying to do all this Ken crap. We just don't get it. So back to this book then. Big Isaaco pure had to introduce these three laws of motion to heavily describe how things move before anyone could understand the rest of his big botan book. These laws are actual heavy used today and taught in your schools by your physics teachers. They apply to everything in the universe and how it all works, although it gets a bit tricky when we talk about atoms, when we need to use the old quantum physics, but no more of that than ooh. So, Law 1, here's a pure botan speak version first for a giggle. Here it's called Lex I, which is Latin for um, number 1, I think. Here we go. Corpus Omni, Perseverare, and Statu Suo Quiescendi. Vel movendi uniformitor in directum nisi quatenis, a viribus impressus cogitor statum illum mutare. Cosa am actual heavy fluid in Latino, I'll translate for you. If an object is at rest or moving in a straight line, at a constant speed, then unless it's heavy acted upon by an unbalanced force, then it'll actually keep doing these things forever, and that. Right, Law 2. Nay, bot and speak now, just proper English like you all speak here in Glasgow. Your unbalanced force is equal to your acceleration times your mass. It's a pure dino easy equation. F equals MA. Law 3. You actually know this already without realising it, but here we go anyway. Every action or force, pure has an equal and opposite reaction or force. But what do these all mean though? Let's have a look at the space shuttle launching off the deck. Right now it is not moving which means all the forces heavy acting on it are balanced, which is Newton's first law. The mass of the shuttle is ginormous and its weight is a force doing the way cause of gravity. But it is not moving. Newton's third law tells us the weight of the shuttle on the ground is equal and opposite to the force of the ground back on the shuttle. All balanced out, all dead still. Newton's first and third law is right there. When the engines pure fire up the shuttle doesn't go anywhere for a couple of seconds. It pure wants to boost up into the sky cosy the force of the rockets but it isn't moving. The force of the launch tower holding it doing is equal and opposite to the rockets force up. It's still all balanced so nothing moves. Eventually the launch tower lets it go and the shuttle fires half up. The weight is still there. But because it's accelerating up, Newton's second law tells us there must be an unbalanced force in the direction it's moving. The rockets are pure well more forceful than the weight of the shuttle, so it accelerates in the direction the rockets are forcing it, and that is up. Discovery's three liquid fuel main engines now throttle back to 67% of rated performance, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. Discovery already three and a half miles in altitude, one and a half miles downrange, traveling almost 750 miles an hour. Everything looking good on the bird. Well, how does a rocket force make it move? It's dead easy, actually. It's the same as what would happen if you blow up a balloon and let it go. The balloon forces the air out, but the air forces the balloon in the opposite direction. Both things move, causing Newton's third law. The shuttle heavy fires out the gases down the way, and the gases heavy force the shuttle up the way. Newton's third law right there too. Simples. All three Newton's laws are used to get the shuttle into space. There are hundreds of other situations where Newton's laws help you figure out what's going on. Quick example, you're in a motor and the driver puts his foot on the brakes, or hits a wall. No idea, I know that. The car heavy stops quickly. 
Your body still wants to continue forward with the speed and direction it was doing before breaking though. This is Newton's first law. Luckily though you were wearing your seatbelt which applied a force to stop you continuing moving forward, otherwise you smack your head after windy. Too much braking and your head flops about forward but your body doesn't cause the seatbelt. Your head is attached to your body so Newton's second law says your head experiences a force to slow you down. Unfortunately it's your neck that gives your head this force and this can cause whiplash. Racing car drivers need to pure wear the hands hangy that keeps your head and shooters in one piece otherwise you'd actually break your neck. Literally, no just metamorphically. Big Newton's laws of emotion are heavy dino when you experience them all the time. Even sitting here watching YouTube on your computer. One mere thing. Imagine you could fire about space without a spacesuit. You were dead still and all the forces were balanced with you. If you farted, then you would force the gas out your bum. Would that then mean that the fart had an equal and opposite force back on your bum? So you would move by fart power? Anyway, don't write about fart power in your physics exam though. Catch it, Versace.